Who of you brought a smartphone today or a tablet? Yes, very good. Okay, almost all of you. Who has got their Wi-Fi turned on on their smartphone or tablet? Okay. And who knew that because of that, I know where you've been in the past year? <laughs> okay, some of you, and the rest is looking like, oh my, he knows so much about me. Okay, very good, very good. So uh, I spent this morning monitoring some of you, and I noticed that you've been at several locations. Obviously, lots of people from Belgium here, that's to be expected. Also, one person from Bangkok. Is there someone here who went to Bangkok? It's supposed to be someone important. Yeah, there's several people. Someone important because he also went to a uh, Hilton Hotel and like Arctic. Also, some people from New York. Some people who went to New York? Someone who went to a bookstore there and used the Wi-Fi there? It might be even without you knowing, because you might have been outside and, and using their Wi-Fi, which is not very kind of you if you haven't visit, visited the bookstore. OK, so um, why do I know all this? Because you're quite scared now, right? Yes, OK. So um, your smartphone is sending out this information to anyone who cares to listen. And that's because your smartphone is constantly looking for networks that it connected to in the past. Even now, your smartphone is looking for your home network, your work network, or any network that you used on vacation or something like that. And this information is sent out unencrypted. So that means that anyone with a laptop with a Wi-Fi dongle, that's all I just used, can just read this information. It's just sent out over the air for everyone to read. And you can obviously get a lot of information from this. This is uh, an image from my smartphone. Well, it's, it's a depiction of my smartphone sending out the networks that it sends out. And from this, you can already see that I'm probably called Bram that I've been to a McDonald's and used the Wi-Fi there, and that I sometimes use a plane, OK? This is only part of the equation, because I knew where you've been, and not just the networks that you connected to. Now, I can do this because there exist people called war drivers. War drivers are just people driving around in their car, connecting to all networks that are available, just looking for all networks that are available, and saving them together with their location, with their GPS location, in a database. I just queried a database for every network that I saw of you guys. And that's how I came up with a nice picture you saw in the beginning. Another interesting story about this is when I first did this experiment at, at our research institute, I'm a PhD student in computer science, I noticed that my thesis advisor after the weekend had two new networks in a smartphone. And obviously, like, I looked up where these networks were located because, let's be honest, you want to know where your advisor is hanging out, right? <laughs> so I saw that he went to the seashore. So I asked him after the weekend, hi, how was your weekend at sea? Which is a great way to get your promoter to be interested in your research. Um, but it also showed me that there was a real problem. Even he did not know that this information was just leaking from a smartphone and could be queried. And so I went looking for other things that I could do with this information. So it's about to get worse. <laughs> um, who here has ever connected to an open network? So a network that you don't have to enter a password for. Yes, OK, almost all of you. Well, I do it all the time. It's quite difficult not to. When I'm abroad, I go to an airport. I, I connect to the Wi-Fi there. Uh, when I get to a restaurant, I want to know what else places I could visit. When I go to the places I visit, I want to see where I can eat. So that's the thing you do when, you, when you're on vacation. Um, but there's a problem in this. And the problem is that it's quite easy to pretend that you're a network. Your smartphone will remember that it's connected to this network in the past. And it will send out, is McDonald's free Wi-Fi around? And there's no reason that I, with my laptop, couldn't say, yeah, hi, I'm McDonald's free Wi-Fi. Just connect me, and we'll see what happens. And you can even try this at home. If you, if you have a home router, you can just change your network name to, for example, McDonald's. And you will see that people will connect to your network automatically, without them even knowing, without them realizing that they're connecting to your network. Obviously, don't try this at home. It's illegal, but you could. So, um, <laughs> so the problem with this is that you are actually the internet for this person, for this person's smartphone. And the smartphone will just start syncing all of its information. It will start get, get, getting its Facebook messages. It will start getting its emails. It'll, it will start downloading anything. But because you, you're the person between them and the internet, you can intercept all of this data. You can 
view and modify the data. This is what we call in technical terms an active man in the middle, someone who can actively modify your data, and someone who can also break encryption. If you use HTTPS, you've probably heard of it. It's a little padlock icon in your browser. If you go to a secured website, <laughs> see how, it, how I did this, secured website. If there's someone between you and the internet, he can just break that connection and still see all of your data. This is obviously a big problem. I, I think you're realizing that now, right? Um, now, I did this for some of you also. No, I did this for all of you, obviously. Um, your smartphones were sending out networks, and some of them were un unencrypted. That means no password was needed to enter. And I tried to spoof all of these networks. I tried, I tried to pretend that I was these networks, and your smartphones connected to them. This is a list of, smart of networks that all of your smartphones right here connected to this morning. It was just a test for two hours or something. So it's quite a lot. And I didn't go further. It's, um, I'm quite a nice guy. I don't want to see your data. Um, but it's actually easier to really capture the data than it is to stop now. I told your smartphones, OK, I'm stopping here. I don't want to know anything more. But someone who is really criminal, into criminal activity, he can capture all of this data. So what can you do about this? Because that's why you came, right? You want to know what you can do about this. Well, first of all, remove networks that you don't use anymore from your phone. If your phone doesn't know about the networks, it will not try to connect to them. It will not send out these networks. This is quite easy to do on Android, on iPhone, on Windows phone. You can just like, go to your network list and remove the networks. If you don't know how to do this, come to me during the reception. I will help you for a small price, of course, um, <laughs> to remove these networks. And a second really big thing that you should never do, even though I do it myself, you see I'm kind of a hypocrite, you should never connect to open networks. Now, of course, it's sometimes difficult not to connect to an open network. Sometimes you just need to get some information or you need to check your work emails. But make sure to remove these networks afterwards because your smartphone will keep sending them out. And other people might pretend to be these networks, as I just did and I, as I just showed you that it's very possible. So part of my research is to solve these problems in an elegant manner, and it's, it's quite possible to do it. If the manufacturers want to do it, if Apple, Microsoft, Google want to do it, it's quite easy to do it in a technical, from a technical standpoint, so that you don't have to worry about this anymore. So I hope they're listening. Hi, Google, Apple, Microsoft, please fix this thing. It's kind of important. Have you heard the groans and the and have you seen the faces? You should, have you got some faces of people? Because that's quite important for Google and Microsoft, I guess, to fix these things. So it's important. What, what I want to tell you is it's important to buy from companies that actively care about your privacy. And look at the networks that you're connecting to, because your privacy might be more important than you think yourself. Thank you for listening. I will be listening to you.